Hamana, hamana, hamana. It's time to speak clearly. I got my Jesus candle lit. I got, uh, I got some incense burning. I got my John Steinbeck mug filled with coffee. Uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome to um, the Paper Call Blueprint Radio Hour. It's never an hour. It's very unprofessional. As you can see, I get right to the point. No bumper music, no bullshit. My name's Gene. I am a paper caller. I, um, I'm a four-figure-a-day paper caller. At least right now I am. Can't complain. Having a good time. Um, just got back from Dallas, Texas. Had nothing to do with day, the, the paper call. Uh, it was all about day trading. It's funny. Um, there's, a, there's a Venn diagram in my head that contains uh, gamblers, affiliate marketers, and um, day traders. And um, you'll find, uh, you'll find uh, a lot of similarities between those three groups of people. And uh, one of the things I like to do, um, aside from paper call, is I'm really into uh, trading. I'm really into trading penny stocks, like Timothy Sykes and um, a few other guys. And I was at a, a boot camp this weekend and um, to break up the monotony and uh, had a great time. Um, happened to uh, accidentally stumble upon um, the JFK uh, spot where, where John uh, Fitzgerald uh, Kennedy was assassinated, supposedly, by Lee Harvey Oswald. And, um, yeah, I literally had the uh, uh, hotel, like, right down the street, completely by accident. And I was walking to the workshop and um and i'm looking down at the highway and i'm like huh something is so oddly familiar about this spot and then uh and then i stumbled upon um, all the plaques and stuff that kind of come with it but uh super fascinating um it's, it's different when you're actually there you know it's so crazy anyway um i want to talk a little bit about uh, paper call today see how everybody's doing um that's i guess that's uh, rhetorical since this is just a one-way broadcast but uh what the hell uh Funny thing happened today, I was launching an internal campaign um, for Paulo Media Group, and if you're not a publisher or an advertiser, there's a link in the description, go sign up. Good, got some good offers over there, um, probably the most honest and best in the business, if you ask me. Um, and I think with um, some of my constructive criticism, they've gotten away from uh, syndicated offers and these uh, multi-tiered kind of brokered offers, and they're more direct, re, you know, working directly with buyers now, which is super awesome. Probably has nothing to do with me, but I do complain. I'm good for one thing over there, and that's bitching and moaning when things aren't going right. So um, you can thank me for that. So if, if things do improve, you're welcome. Uh, anyway, go sign up over there, Paulo. Uh, great, great, great group of people. Um, one of these days, I got to figure out Skype and um, how to get um, people on the show. So I can have guys like Anthony and Ollie and uh, Josh and yeah, there's a there's a group of people over there that um, make the gears turn and the world work. And um, without them, I would be nowhere. They're amazing people, and I want what's best for you too. So you know you should be a part of the club as well. And if you have any feedback, don't be afraid to let people know over there because they truly do want to help you make money. Because obviously they make money when you make money, and that's that's really what it's all about in this business. But um, yeah, I could not get today. Today, what I, so I was running a Medicare campaign, or I was launching a Medicare campaign, really good internal campaign. Um, Medicare offer pays at like forty bucks on like a two minute call or something like that. So we could actually we could actually compete, which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, and so I got a new DID, which is a promo number essentially, and uh, which meant I had to. Um, and I'm not using any third party tracking or anything. I just run call only. Very simple now. I don't use third party stuff. I'm not. I'm not footing the bill so I can listen to recorded calls and things like that. There are times and places for that, but um, man, I, I really kind of boiled things down to the simple, most basic um, campaigns possible, and I just focus there. And sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. But when they work, they work great. And when they don't, well, that's tough luck. Let's move on to the next one, right? So um, yeah, I tried to get these ads approved after putting a new new phone number in there, and. Um, I forgot to update the phone number on my landing page, and uh, wouldn't you know, the ads got denied. So I'm like, oh shucks, you know, I better better get in that landing page and update that that phone number. And um, 
And so I do. I, I go in there and I update that phone number and then I, I resubmit my ads. Of course, I had to like manipulate the text a little bit so the ad would be unique and I resubmit it. I did that in the Google Ads Editor. And um, about 10 minutes later, they're all disapproved again. And I'm like, oh, shucks. What's going on here? Why can't I get my ads approved? Um, so and then I'm like, well, maybe Google's looking at like a cached page or something. You know, maybe that's what the deal is. So I purge all the cache, cache, uh, cache buttons on my uh, WP engine or on, on the internal WP engine site and purge all the cache. So really everything should be fresh. And, um, and then I hit that submit button again and boom, no, no ads getting approved. Same thing. Um, they can't compare the phone number on the landing page with the phone number in the ad. And I'm just like, oh, shucks, what's going on here? And all day, I'm just like, I'm going back, I'm testing new things. I'm like, you know, I, it, it's, it should work. It really should. You know, I'm like, this is a Google problem. You know, it's obviously the phone number is congruent, compliant. It's exactly the same in the damn ad. Um, I finally gave up and um, I finally gave up and just created a new, new landing page. And, um, and then within like five minutes, all my ads were approved. What do you go figure? Still haven't figured it out. I don't know why. Uh, it's just little quirks about Google. So it makes me wonder. It's like, you know, um, you know, if I run into like, what, what are, what are the things I don't know? You know, like you know, I, I launch a campaign and, and maybe it's not performing properly. And, um, and regardless of what I do, I just can't get the traffic turned on, you know? Well, best thing to do is probably just, just start over, <laughs> build a new campaign. Sometimes that does the trick, you know? Um, Google isn't perfect. That's, that's one thing I've come to uh, conclude or conclude. It's one thing I've, I've really just kind of um, realized. One of the big re realizations is Google isn't perfect, man. Even though they try to make it sound like they are and they got everything together, it's, it's a bit of a shit show in there and it's not perfect. So, um, you know, if you think it's not you, chances are it's not you, you know, with whatever. 99% um, of the time, it's probably you. Um, I know it's usually me, but a lot of times getting ads approved and things like that. Like there was this time like when Google ads are like that the, the call only ads weren't getting approved because of the business name. Um, there was like I, I couldn't figure out like like what Google was doing to um, determine what my business name is because when you when you try to get a, a call only ad approved, um, nowadays you got to have a business name uh, in the business name field. It used to be optional, and it, you could also actually put keywords in there so it was even better you could just keyword stuff it you know so um it just gave you an opportunity to kind of like you know add some more keywords that it really had nothing to do with like your ability to be shown in the in the results or anything it just it was an easier way to call out you know to the person looking at your ad that oh you know this is for that you know so um uh but now it's like now you got to use uh, the domain name if you don't have a professional like like uh, branded you know name um, you could use like the domain name and so forth. And there was a time I just could not get ads approved regardless of what I put in there. Unless I was bullshitting them and I was putting a, you know, a stuffed keyword or something in there. And um, I don't know what it is. And then like, you know, I, I had a campaign that was just, it was just paused because I gave up trying to get ads approved. And then like a month later, all my ads were approved, you know, the paused campaign. So, so you know, things you just got to roll with. Um, there's this um, uh, interesting issue that new paper callers have where they get lots of clicks but they don't get too many phone calls and it's really frustrating especially when you're on a limited budget and um and um you know you're you're trying to like figure out like why are people clicking on my ads but nobody's making a call and uh and it could drive you crazy when you haven't quite like got a number of like good campaigns on your belt because you 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 start suspecting fraud, right? Um, and I just want to talk a little bit today about um, keyword intent, you know, caller intent, and um, things that you might be able to do if you're running into this problem um, uh, that could hopefully remedy the situation. Um, first of all, I just want to tell you that I don't believe, I believe like maybe two or three out of 10 people will actually read the ad. So when somebody does a Google search, I think they just automatically assume that Google is going to return the right result, regardless of whatever, what fucking stupid ass keyword search phrase they put in there. It could be completely spelled wrong and stupid, and these people will still just assume that Google is going to read their mind and serve them the, 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 the right result, and they won't even read your ads. So you got to deal with those people, for one. Um, and then on top of that, there's... there's um, you know, there's, there's different types of keywords. You can categorize keywords, 
you know, um, and I wrote them down here. And I actually have this in my paper called Blueprint Course. Um, and this is where I got this from. Um, it becomes intuitive after a while. But, you know, some of the reasons why somebody might click on your ad and not call are because of these reasons. Um, first of all, let me, let me take a step back. So there's going to be like three categories of keyword or searches, right? Um, there's going to be an informational um, uh, keyword search. So a lot of times these are people looking for like symptoms to a problem or maybe they're trying to define something like, a, you know, they're looking for definition, you know, just general knowledge seekers, right? They're just looking for information, right? Um, there's navigational. There's navigational searches, right? So people are trying to get to a location, right? Um, often that doesn't work with, with, with paper call because, well, you know, um, I, and I use this example in my course. It's like, um, you may be offering addiction rehab and somebody may be doing a search for like a detox center in a specific location in their town, right? Um, to you, that might sound like, oh, that's come somewhat congruent. If we can get that person on the phone, you know, maybe the call center can convince that person that they need to jump on a plane and go to Florida as opposed to down the street, right? But that's just bananas, right? That's, that's us trying to kind of, you know, we're trying to like, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to kind of like conform the search phrase, you know, to fit our kind of idea of what, what should happen, but it just doesn't work that way. So there's the navigational stuff that's just no good. There's the informational stuff that's no good. Um, and I'm talking about high intent, like call only campaigns, right? Where you don't have much time to sit there and convince somebody that you're the brand that they should go with, right? Um, and then there's the transactional kind, the, the, the kind of keywords where the people are super high intent, they know exactly what they want, and, um, and, and they're on the phone ready to, to make a deal, you know, or get more information about something, like they want to buy something, right? Um, you know, a good example of that would be like emergency plumber, you know, or some kind of emergency locksmith or you're stranded on the side of the road and you're looking for a tow truck. At, at the, in, you know, in those instances, you're not like comparison shopping too much. You know, you just need to get the job done, right? You just need to get somebody on the phone that can deliver the goods, right? Now, those are the kind of keywords we're looking for, right? And, um, and the crux of Google these days is that phrase match bidding doesn't work very well unless it's like a super high volume keyword and the phrase is very small, you know, very short, right? Long tail, long tail doesn't work. I, I, you know, it's like very rarely are you going to ever like punch in a, 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 you know, punch in a long tail keyword with three or four keywords in it and expect it to actually generate volume. I mean, it's got to be a very generic phrase to, for it to work. Google wants you, I'll be honest with you, Google wants you to broad bid. And, and I think that's because that's where they give you traffic. They want you to broad bid and they want you to use one of their stupid uh, smart bidding strategies, which is an oxymoron, stupid smart bidding strategies, um, which doesn't work too well in uh, call only. You got to go manual. You got to go manual. You got to keep that enhanced box unchecked and you just got to control your campaign on your own. If you really want to see some results, like if you truly want to see what's going on, you just got to take it away from the black box. You know, that, that's, that's been my, uh, my, uh, I'm always trying to come up with these words that I think about, but then when I want to like say them out loud, I hesitate. Modus operandi? Modus operandi? Does that make sense? I always do that. I always have these, I have a vocabulary, I have an extensive vocabulary in my head of words that I've never said before until right now. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work very well. Um, that's why I stop and pause because I'm like, oh, that word is not going to work when it comes out of my mouth. But um, that's the thing, though, right? It's like, it's like you know, so, so there's this kind of like smoke and mirrors. Like there's this idea that they want you to do things a certain way that just doesn't seem to work. Uh, and so you got to start to kind of like break that apart and figure out like where did it stop working and then go from there and I've, I've, I've basically found that if I just stick with the manual mode and I take the and I uncheck the enhanced box because that just increases your that just increases your your spend it doesn't it might it might improve your ROI but for, for what I can see is it just increases my spend and um, hasn't really helped much in terms of how much money I actually put in my my pocket you know um, so so yeah so stick with um, stick with broad which is going to nail you with bad quality scores, right? Because it's like you're trying to please everybody. Uh, but then at the same time, it's like, well, if you want traffic, you got to go broad or broad match modified. You know, you got to start modifying those keywords a little bit and start putting a little plus sign next to the words that you know you want to have in that search phrase, you know, that search phrase that um, the Googler is Googling, right? Um, 
and you just got to work from there and then do your best to like dig yourself out of the quality score graveyard um, you know grave as as um, as the traffic starts to come in by by blacklisting or negativing out all of the search terms that make no sense whatsoever all the informational seekers and, and all of the navigational seekers looking for exact locations and so forth and over time hopefully you find a little middle ground where where the bids aren't um, so high that you can't you can't compete but then at the same time you're bringing in like congruent targeted traffic um, that seems to be kind of like where I'm at right now is just um, figuring that out but a lot of people again they have this issue where they're like getting a lot of clicks and they're not getting uh, too many calls another reason for that too is that they're too high up on the page now there's only like three spots on the page right for for um, for for the for this auction traffic and the call only traffic and if you're if you if you're you know if you're hitting that bid super hard and your balls to wall and your average position is um, like one you know or between one and one point nine or something you're gonna get a lot of clicks you're gonna get a lot of clickers um, it's great for your CTR it's great for your th your click through rate but it's not really gonna serve you too well um, with call quality and if you're dealing with an expensive click which we are in Google's Google's world for the most part. Um, you want to you want to be able to pull that back. So that's the whole game, right? And the whole game is to like when you launch a campaign, you know, start with an aggressive bid so you can get up on the page and so you can get some data so you can kind of prime the pump. But pay attention to where that average position is and and see if you can pull it back into like the two or three spot because that's when people start to scan and they start to see you know the words start to kind of make sense and then then they're reading because you know if they're reading number two number three that means they probably read number one and if your if your ad is congruent and jiving with what they're looking for. You're gonna have a better better time, you know. Um, so that that's kind of like my my advice to you is like like get rid of the informational like search terms where people are just knowledge sinking, looking for symptoms, looking for definitions, you know, just dumb stuff that has nothing to do with your offer. And um, and then any anywhere you see like street addresses, you know, figure out ways of like broad match broad negative negativing those things out in a broad way, you know, like the word street, boulevard, road. Um, you know, um, you know, sometimes it'd be like, uh, you know, like first, second, third, fourth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 144th street, you know, those things could go away as well. You know, you just start, start Xing those out, get rid of those. And you'll start to see like, as the traffic comes in over the weeks, you know, um, uh, the quality will start to kind of pick up and your quality scores will actually get better. They'll probably go up one or two points and, uh, the traffic will get a little bit cheaper and just bid on what you can afford. Sometimes you just have to just bite the bullet and realize that you're just you're just in a competition with people who can afford to outbid you, and they will gladly, and they will make you go broke. You know, it's just it's just the way the game is working. It works, you know. Um, yeah, I, I honestly feel like like when you broad bid at the start of a campaign, ninety five percent of that traffic is probably going to be informational seekers and navigational seekers, and the real good stuff is about five percent, and um, uh, and you, your goal as as the the media buyer, the data guy, is to sit there and start to clean out that you know by blacklisting and so forth, and, and pausing keywords that just are obviously like duds, you know, and uh, and clean that up, and then just try to find a balance between um, good quality, um, a decent price, and um, and then you know hopefully something is converting by then. Uh, you could usually do this in the first day or two if you see the data is rolling in and you get a couple of conversions like this. Like the, I finally got this thing rolling, this Medicare campaign, and today, you know, I got I set it at a hundred dollars a day budget, and I've spent seventy, and I've made eighty. Right, so so thankfully we've already had two conversions. We've had a nine minute and eighteen minute call um, already in the in a, in the hour. Um, so you know that's that's very promising when you launch a campaign from from scratch and already you're at break even or just a little bit above it. Uh, so over the next few days, you know, I, I will be in there extensively digging in there and looking for all the negatives that, that I want to add. And um, I'll be using um, a website called keywordshitter.com, which is a great keyword tool that uses the uh, Google's like wonder wheel. You know, you know when they do all the, the autofill for your search terms when you're typing them in and you're like, how does Google know what I'm thinking? Um, it, uses that, it uses that technology um, on, and so you can just kind of get a huge idea of like what people are searching for and then you can start to kind of pull out the stuff that is obviously not interesting to um, your offer you know so something to, something to look at um, there's another thing that I struggled with when I got started and uh, let me shift my camera I got my Jesus candle rolling it's awesome 
Um, but there's another thing that confused me early on um, with uh, paper call. And it was the whole idea. Like when I first got started, uh, I ran a Vivint home security offer. And, uh, and one of the big things that, that we couldn't do in the home security space, and this is like 80, it was because of ADT, it wasn't because of Vivint, but it was because of ADT was, I think ADT was like super hardcore on people using their brand name and they would, they would, they would sue people, they would sue publishers that got caught, you know, um, dropping their brand name in ads and stuff. And so it scared the shit out of me because I was like, oh man, last thing I need is like a lawsuit for just doing some stupid marketing stuff on the side. And, um, and but then it, it opened up this question. The question was, is like, like, well, how, if I can't, if I can't tell people what I'm doing, like if, if I can't tell people I'm trying to market, you know, Vivint, um, what the hell am I supposed to tell them? I mean, it's like trying to sell a BMW at the dealership, but you can't tell people it's a BMW. It's like, like, how does this work, right? Like, this is, this is bananas to make me, you know. So, um, it took a while, but really what it comes down to is, um, well, they're trying to protect their brand for one, so I can understand that. And they're kind of giving you the opportunity to make money, you know, selling their product, which is a great product. And this is for any brand for the most part. But, you know, how does, like, the publisher go about um, launching a campaign and they're selling something yet they're not really allowed to talk about so much the brand or the product that they're trying to sell, right? Like, if you're trying to sell Geico insurance and you're not allowed to say the word Geico, I mean, it's like, how the hell are you supposed to sell insurance that's Geico, right? Well, the workaround is, you could take you could take a play out of the playbook on some bigger advertisers or bigger brands like Home Advisor. Um, Yelp is a good example too. Yellow Pages is another good example. These are all connecting services, right? They're all like self-admitted like middlemen that reduce the friction between you the consumer and well you know, us the consumers and um and then these businesses that don't have the time or the energy to represent themselves and so um so enter like a home advisor right whose job is basically to um connect the dots right they're just a lead gen company they're just like you and me they're they're publishers except for somebody was really smart and thinking super big and they turned it into a gigantic probably um, multi, you know, they, I don't, I don't know if they're a publicly traded company or not, but they're probably a very big company, uh, home advisor. And it's just a lead gen company. It's all it does is it just connects. It just connects. It just, it takes your data and it sends out leads to like these, these contractors and stuff out in town. Um, e-local I think is another one and I, you know, yellow pages and, um, and, and so Yelp, right? So, so, so that's how you got to kind of like turn this, that's how you got to turn this whole thing around is like, you're the connector service, right? So you're providing, um, you know, you're providing the, 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 the simple way to, you know, connect somebody with an emergency plumber or an emergency locksmith or, you know, if somebody needs help with addiction, you know, you're the first step that's going to connect them to the people that they need to talk to. You know people. You're a networker. That's what you do, you know? That's the whole idea. And, um, and that's how you're supposed to frame it. I think that was like a super huge takeaway because I had that problem. And sometimes like when I get started in a new campaign and a new vertical and I don't have a website and it's something strange, like right now we're looking at, um, like Paulo right now is starting to look at, um, a couple of like ideas, like, uh, what's one, um, what's hot right now is like, um, I might say teeth whitening isn't isn't it? I think it's the orthodontic mouthpiece stuff, like the mouth guards that can like over time. It, well, it's becoming like a pretty easy process, right? So the orthodontist is actually being replaced by a system where you can go to a website, give them some simple information, and they send you a box of stuff, and then you can start straightening your teeth, right? And like in my mind, I'm like, how in the hell am I supposed to like get that person on the phone? That, that seems like a process, right? But if you, you, know, you look at your target market and like who's calling and, and, and um, you know, it's different, you know, who's calling? Uh, it, it could be a lot easier than you think, right? Like where that, where that kind of product is, is doing really well um, is with um, Instagram and, and uh, Snapchat. Um, and that's with the youth, right? That's with the kids. It's with the, like the millennials, right? Like the kids that don't want to get on the phone, that's working, right? But what about the parents, right? What about the grandparents, um, there's a lot of adults that that might want to look at some rudimentary research, but they kind of got the idea. 
So I'm thinking, well, you know, it's like I may be able to like remove the 18 to 24 year old bracket or the 33 to or the 25 to 33 or 34 year old brackets and just focus on older folks that aren't afraid to get on the phone, um, that are willing to talk to somebody. And then, you know, um, come up with a, a very simple website that talks about like the service that we provide. It's like we just connect you with with a company and um, that's going to be able to provide you the service. Just to hop on the phone with them and um, you should be good to go, you know. So those are just things to think about. You just got to get creative and start thinking outside the box. You know, um, a lot of things, a lot of times what happens is people will, will see your ad and if you have a compelling or convincing enough ad and they click it and they realize it's a call only ad and they're not really ready to call, they will Google your, they'll Google your website. And, um, and so it's really helpful to have, you know, a real website if you can, or at least a landing page with enough information on it, maybe direct response landing page just for this purpose to make sure that people um, can find what they're looking for. And then, you know, as long as you have um, some trust on your website, uh, you know, testimonials, there's a lot of things you can do with a website or landing page to make it seem legit. Um, I highly recommend you, you, you try to take the white hat approach and not just kind of fabricate everything. Um, but uh, the whole idea is, is like, you know, people do that. They will, they will see your ad. If it's a good ad, you will be rewarded with, <laughs> this is kind of not true, but you'll be rewarded you're not rewarded with anything because they obviously wasted your click and now they're going to your website and um, and maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, you know. So you, you do kind of want to be ready for that. Um, and that's just kind of the way, that's just kind of way that works right now. So trying to figure out like those, those untapped verticals and those untapped niches where a website really can go a long ways for you. It, it comes down to like, okay, um, you know, how can I get these people on the phone? Um, and a lot of times it's going to be through a landing page. So be, you know, you just got to be prepared for that. Um, what else? What's going on? Um, um, addiction, mental health, kicking butt there. Um, running, um, running some Medicare now. Um, pause pretty much everything else at the moment. Uh, just, man, just getting kind of crushed by quality scores, trying to figure out how to like get the cost going down. It's funny, like it's good to get in on offers kind of early, but man, after a few weeks of them being out and floating around, um, I you can watch the prices start to go up, and it gets a little crazy. So uh, yeah, just kind of taking it one offer at a time. It's been a, it's been an interesting year for for paper call offers. Uh, again, like Google doesn't make it easy, and um, and I think that's that's deterred a lot of publishers. A lot of publishers are like, man, getting crushed over here. Um, so hopefully some of these little tips can kind of help you. Um, I've been wrapped up in day trading. I know uh, it's like one of these like addictive things and I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's new to me um, last, in this last year or so. I've really kind of been focused on it, hardcore, trading penny stocks uh, and uh, just having a blast. And it's just because the people are kind of just like, like internet marketers. It's the same thing. Um, I just feel like right now it's like over there, I feel like I can make, I can, it's more sustainable. Like I could see, like, I don't see paper call. Like it, this is just me speaking. Like, honestly, I just don't see paper call being, um, as fruitful as it is today, as it was yesterday in like the next five years. I could be completely wrong about that. Um, you know, you could be a media manager and you can manage somebody's, you can manage somebody's you know, brand for them. There's a lot you can do with Google ads. I mean, don't get me wrong, but the whole idea of being able to just launch campaigns and get them off the ground and make a ton of money, it just doesn't, I just don't see it anymore. And I think it's just because we have one traffic source and everybody's piled on top of it. And there's guys out there that are better. There's guys out there way better than me that are kicking ass. There's, you know, and I'm probably better than a lot of you watching this. And, you know, so, so there's like, there's some ropes and you got to learn and, and get in there. Um, you got to find your unfair advantages. Um, I don't want to deter you guys. Affiliate marketing is hard. It's hard everywhere. There's no easy wins. Um, pick your poison and just stick with it until you got it figured out. And just try to find something that you can enjoy because it could be rough. But the rewards are super high. I mean, you know, it's like I got um, a couple of thousand dollars in revenue today. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I haven't looked at my cost, but I'm pretty sure it's about half of what I paid. Uh, you know, it, the revenue is about, I paid about half in, in Google ads. So there's, there's good profits there and it's still consistent. And, um, and I take kind of a lazy approach too nowadays. I'm not sitting there trying to like build out a, 
gnarly website for everything I launch and and you know software as a service there's like so many of them and it's like that's another thing too it's just like every once in a while you got to kind of look and see like what you're paying for um that you don't even use anymore um that you don't even need because you don't need it and um so that's i guess there's like i guess there's like a balance right it's like the beauty about paper call is like it doesn't take much to get started but it is a little bit difficult oh a little battery i should turn that thing plug that in We're going, we're going, uh, commando. No, we're not. We're not going commando. <laughs> I just switched. I had this camera that's got all the audio stuff turned on it. And, um, and I, it wasn't even plugged in. So it just died. Um, anyway, with that being said, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching my YouTube radio hour. That was 30 minutes of me just blabbing away. Um, there's some, there's some links in the, uh, description that will um, help you get to the paper call blueprint course 2019 version there's a discount code in there too if you want to learn paper call the way i do it um, get things set up if you're looking for some passive income that's the way to go um, and if you're looking to be a publisher and you want to run some offers on paul or so forth um, check that out as well sorry for the uh, the technical snafu there i should have been a little more uh, prepared good thing this isn't going on itunes all right take it easy peace out fade to black